How can we make the world better? By making ourselves better. The Dr. Joe Show explores how you can make positive personal change by using his groundbreaking and highly effective I Am approach to understand who we are and why we do what we do. Your small changes can have big effects. Join us now for the Dr. Joe Show with Mark Stiles of Stiles Law, Thomas McCoy, and your host, Dr. Joe Schrand. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Dr. Joe Show. I tell you, it just brings a smile to my face every time you do that, Mark. It's just wonderful. It's incredible. It's a way to start the show, then, to have you with a smile on your face, right? It's, it's fantastic. Tom, could you introduce our guest for tonight? He's been in private practice since 1996. He's a two-time best-selling author of Doc Stamstel and Million Dollar Business Card and an international speaker. Welcome to the show, Dr. Ross Carter. Yes, welcome, <laughs> Dr. Ross Carter. It is fantastic to have you here. I'm, we're so excited. You are a specialist in regenerative medicine. Regenerative. Right. I I must admit, I've been doing medicine psychiatry for a long time, but I'm fascinated by this because I, I I don't think I really know what it is. What is regenerative medicine? It's really the process of, or a a system of of rebuilding or regenerating cells that have been damaged or are dying. And you can use it for things like, let's say, you know, osteoarthritis or other conditions where you've got inflammation or damage. So it's really just trying to restore or rebuild the, the, the cellular matrix that, that has been damaged. Say, and, and how is that possible? How do we do that? Well, um, there, there are many different types of regenerative procedures, but let's typically, let's, let's take the one that most people are, have heard of, which would be stem cells. Uh, most people have heard about stem cells, but they don't really know much about how they work and what they are. So a stem cell is really the master cell of your body. Every, every tissue and organ system has come from a stem cell. And a stem cell is an undifferentiated cell, meaning it, it hasn't chosen a path for what it's going to become. So mm -hmm. what's cool about a stem cell is it can replicate itself, so it can make more of itself, or it can differentiate into whatever tissue is necessary, whether that be muscle, ligaments, bone, blood, you know, it, can, it forms all the different uh, types of tissue. So, so those, that's what stem cells do. And we can utilize our own stem cells, for example, that we have in our, our bone marrow, and we can harvest those cells, and we can use them to stimulate um, healing of damage that we had. Let's say uh, your knee is worn out because, you know, you know old age or, or you've ran too much or you're in military or whatever. You can take, like, your own cells and stimulate some regeneration of your knee to, to help eliminate inflammation and pain. So that's what it, it, it's one way you can utilize it, but you can use it for systemic purposes to, to basically take away inflammation throughout your body, which can help with pretty much every condition there is. I mean, inflammation is the root of all evil, I would say, you know, whether it be heart disease, cancer, stroke, uh, diabetes, obesity, you know, you name it, there's an inflammatory base. So Stem cells can be used in a wide variety of different uh, applications. And, and we're seeing, you know, more and more, of, well, it's being used right now, especially for COVID, for post-COVID syndrome, where people have fibrotic tissue in their, in their lungs from, from the damage, and they're using it for, for that, and it can help to, to um, reverse some of the scar tissue that's built up. So, so a lot of different medical phrases here. So stem cells, just so people, S-T-E-M, like the stem, the root of something. Yes. Uh, and, and those are living in the bone marrow. Which... They're, they're actually in all parts of the body. I mean, really, we have stem cells really, you know, we, we, we lose blood cells like that. I mean, they're, they're always repairing themselves. So we would have something called a hematopoietic stem cell, which is making more blood. Or we would have skin stem cells that are making more skin because you lose skin all the time. So 
the skin the, the re regenerative system is always working otherwise we would we wouldn't we would die once the stem right. cells run out you you don't have repair anymore so right. that's a constant system all of our cells are replaced uh over time depending on what you know whether it be the brain or a bone or or blood they're all replaced over time so all that, repair was, that was very controversial wasn't it for a long time about whether brain cells actually get replaced wasn't there that's a true. theory for a long time that once it's done it's done which never made any sense the and it's probably, and it's not true it's not true they're showing that you know neuroplasticity is 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 real in that our brain has the ability to to regenerate itself if given the right circumstances so yes it can, it right. can happen they're doing studies actually right now on brain damage uh with regenerative procedures and they're showing really positive results that's remarkable yeah just just so folks know for for a long time uh medicine was taught and we were all taught that once brain cells had died they were gone forever and there was there was no replacement of them we were also taught that we only use 10 percent of our brain remember that yeah which is the silliest thing you know if you think about it the, the probably the the most important part of our body we would only use 10 percent of it turns out that 10 percent of the brain are the neurons which is what everybody knows about and 90 percent are these other really cool cells called glial cells but we can talk about that another time but it's really fascinating so mark you were asking a question off air do you mind if we go back Absolutely. to that right. so so um going on 18 years and 16 years ago um at the time that my children were born i opted to have their stem cell uh, extracted at the birthing table and stored and every year I'm paying a storage fee for it so I asked Dr. Ross if if a uh, that was a good idea and b if well I haven't asked you this yet but if there's okay. some advancements that I can actually take possession of those or do something else with the that stem cell uh, yeah and the 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 answer is absolutely great choice to do 18 uh, well you said 16 18 years ago yeah yeah, that you know that's surprising because uh, most people in that period of time would not have chose to do that because well it could be a, it probably was fairly expensive, but it's a great thing it's a wonderful thing and anybody having a child or or soon to have a child, uh, the, they should always try to store and save that it's it's really an insurance policy, mm. it's the best insurance policy you can you can really have because. You can regenerate a lot of different issues. You can, it, it's really good. You could use it yourself. Your family could use it. It, it could be used for other people, not just your children. So there's a, there, so what I would do is contact the company that's doing, uh, storing the, 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 the placental tissue and see what they've done with it when they, I mean, did they store it in separate pieces or how was it stored and what you can do with it yourself? Can you, defrost part of it and utilize it or what, what is their 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 criteria but you you know it, it's it's a it's an amazing uh, thing to keep and use for yourself and it, it really you know, people pay five to ten thousand dollars for one treatment and you've just stored about a thousand you know <laughs> so wow. it's uh, it's very valuable cool so th this actually gets into something that's really I think powerful. So a stem cell can be used. You said that anyone could use a stem cell. Yes. So so it doesn't create an immune response. It doesn't create an immune rejection. It does, but not initially. What's amazing about stem cells is that they have the ability to be what's called uh, immunoevasive, meaning they can evade the immune system for a period of time of someone else. They have that they really do two things when they become activated, which is what they, um, they they do. They become you know active, and then what they can do is they modulate the immune system. So that usually means that they take down inflammation and they kind of uh, hide from being destroyed. And the second thing they do is they set up a regenerative um, area or site so regeneration can happen. So that's how they can evade the immune system for a period of time, even if it's not the cell of the person that uh, it came from. Well, not to get all shrinky and philosophical about it, but what does that say about us as a human species? 
and our and our similarity with each other that that you could take a stem cell from anyone you know not only that <laughs> I do seminars every week uh, for a large um, health institute here in West Palm Beach. And um, one of the participants actually uh, on Tuesday said he had had stem cell. And I was like, oh, tell us about your experience. And he said, I got it from baby sharks and they injected it in my neck or my, and I was like, you know, I, you can do that, I guess. I'm, I would not advise it, but they, you know, you can use stem cells from cross species. I know they used um, uh, human stem cells for animals as well, and it's successful. You see, you have to understand that the stem cell itself, when you're using someone else's, doesn't actually become the tissue. It stimulates your own body to heal itself. It's like uh, if you drank coffee and you were tired and suddenly you have this energy. It's your body that's creating that energy. It's not really the coffee. It's stimulating your body to have a response. Well, stem cells are similar in that when you put them, you know, you inject some stem cells from your body or someone else into a damaged area. It's what it does is it surveys the area and, and determine what needs to happen. And then it starts a process of it sends out chemical messages to the local cells in that area. And then they start the repair. So you have what's called um, quiescent cells, which are basically just dormant cells that aren't repairing for whatever reason. As we get older, the amount of cells that we have that repair goes down and their, their, their abilities also decrease. This is a way to stimulate them to get to work again. That's, so that's how it works. So could it also be used as a fountain of youth type of uh, therapy? Absolutely. Uh, you know, that, that is actually, I would say, the closest we have to a fountain of youth because the, 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 the cells that make our body are able to heal our body. So we can use it. And a lot of, I work with a lot of celebrities. They use um, this as an IV on a monthly basis where they're using uh, stem cells or something called exosomes, which I'll tell you about in a second. And they use that as an IV and it just, it regenerates your body. And it actually, it actually changes, it goes into epigenetics and we can start to change our age and make us younger. Because when you're taking cells from a younger person, it will actually influence your cells to act more young and it can change the epigenetics, which has to do with the expression of your genes. So you are an expression of your genes right now. You, but what happens as you get older, your genes start to turn off. They become methylized. And so you have a methyl group that attaches and turns off the genes and the expression of those genes is different. Like, for example, uh, like when most people are young, they can drink milk, even, even cow's milk, uh, and they don't have a challenge. But as we get older, we tend to not be able to drink milk. So why, is that, why does that happen? Well, the gene that, that, uh, that allows us to break down milk is turned off. So, that, so that's epigenetics. What if we could turn that gene back on? Then you could drink milk again, right? So that's the same thing that happens when we're doing these procedures. We're actually, we can actually change the epigenetics code to be as a younger version. They did this, a cool, crazy, weird study where they took two mal, uh, mice and they, it was, one was an old one and one was a new one. And they, they connected their bloodstreams, right? And then they wanted to see what would happen. And what was really amazing was that the old mouse started to become build new uh, bone and blood and everything started becoming younger, even the brain functions. So they showed but with what's called parabiosis, how that young mice, a mouse uh, connected to an old mouse made the old mouse young. And that's the same thing that we can do with our own bodies. We can use younger cells. We don't have to just use our own, but we can use younger cells to make ourselves younger as well. And that's uh, a therapy that's extremely popular uh, because it really, it will genetically make you younger, or at least epigenetically. Yeah, we, we, we got we to gotta hear more about that. I, I, I yeah, how we do. Of, of, of the celebrities that you were talking about, uh, would we call them stem celebrities? <laughs> you just did. You just did. All those words. Sorry. That is funny. Stem so, celebrities. <laughs> so is there 
Is there going to be a way in the future to like sort of mass produce stem cells? Because when I think of like stem yeah. cell therapy, I think of like Star Wars when Luke's in the big tank, just like, <laughs> and, and just, it's it. just like goo filling all the holes. And it's like, hey, you're, uh, you're bone now, you're blood now. Well, yeah, that's re really where it's going. As the, the, the you know, originally stem cells were, especially in the United States, when, you know, this is when George Bush was in, in office. You know, he there was embryonic stem cells going on at that time. And, you know, he was like very against it. And so was religion in general, because it was it was killing a uh, an embryo. But see, we've advanced so much. That was at least 20 years ago since that had happened. And we can just use placental tissue, which when a baby's born, the placental tissue remains, as, as we both know. And it usually is discarded. We can use that and recycle it, and we've got a regenerative factory right there. It has so many active cells that can just change people's lives. It can help with people that have like autoimmune diseases or autism or Parkinson's, uh, Alzheimer's. It can help with all kind of different problems that we, we really struggle and don't have a solution for. Regenerative medicine is, is where these solutions lie, but it's really a, a long process. It takes a long time to get these things through with these trials. But, you know, if unfortunately other countries don't have such restrictions and people travel and do go to like Panama and Mexico and other places to do these stem cell procedures that are not even allowed here. I learned about stem cell therapy from, from Thailand, actually. I flew to Thailand uh, 10 years ago when I learned about it because I broke my knee. Um, I was, <laughs> I was 41 and I, I started, I, okay, I wanted, I was single. I wanted to uh, start meeting girl, w women. And uh, uh, so I thought, Hey, I know, why don't I start taking dodgeball? That was the, that was the sport I started taking <laughs> in Atlanta. And so I joined a league and I was like the oldest guy in the whole league. Everybody else was 20 and I was 41 um, and, uh, I, I, I was playing. It was, I was awesome fun. And then I threw a ball and then suddenly my, I landed on my back and I thought somebody had hit me, but nobody hit me. It, my knee collapsed and it fractured. So I fractured my knee, tore my ACL and I had a rehab center at the time. So I was doing rehab. Um, it didn't get better. I was always favoring my other knee. Uh, when I would walk and everything. And, you know, no one wants a limping doctor to say, hey, I'm going to fix your knee when I couldn't fix my own. <laughs> so I was in kind of a desperation mode. I went to an orthopedist and he said, well, you know, you have to have surgery. There's nothing you can do. So they, they said, hey, you can have a part of your hamstring attached or we'll do cadaver tissue. And I was like, are you kidding me? And I'd seen so many people with knee surgeries that did not work out that, you know, there's so many. And so I was like, there has to be a, there has to be something, a gap, there's a gap between, you know, physical therapy or physical rehab and surgery. There was, there, there was something that was missing. And what I found out, it was regenerative medicine and stem cell, but I had to find out and go to Thailand for three months and learn all about it there. And that's, that's how I got involved in. Once I did a procedure a month later, my problem was gone. I never had surgery and I still haven't had surgery and I run every day. So it really wow. worked for me, and it, it, I've seen it work with thousands of, of patients that I've worked with, too. So that's how you got into it? Was Yeah, really that's how I got into it, out of necessity. I didn't, I didn't know anything about it before. I'd heard, I, I was like the general public. I'd heard the negative stories. It, at that time, it was like Lolly the Lamb, and, you know, where they did the, the, you know, the cloning and, you know, the negative things. So I'd heard just, just bad things. Well, what's uh, the... I never, what? What's the connection there? Like, where where's the cloning uh, dialogue coming from? Where's, you know, were they were they actually cloning? And like, yeah, they they, they took a lamb and they made another one out of it. I don't know how they did it, but but how, where's the connection between stem cells? Because that's that they is the negative. To do that. Okay. They, they use stem cells to do that. So you know, for for me that you know, so I I just never heard anything good like. Or I never heard it used as a therapy at for our general public. I had only heard of it as, like as research, you know. So this was the first time I was like, "Hey, I could actually use this for something to re to to fix me." So I, mm -hmm. that's why I flew there. I'm like, I, "Well, I gotta go because I can't I can't be congruent with my beliefs if I'm I'm limping around trying to help other people with their knee pain." <laughs> so you so you really uh, out of joint and. and uh... 
out on a limb. But sorry, that was a, a neat joke. I okay. need to like a little drum and a cymbal when you have <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, do. we do. We do. When we were in the studio, we used to have it. It's, it's a tough, it's a tough sell. Yeah, tough it sell. Get it? Tough sell. Thank you. Um, but, but, but this is fast. So, so do you mind if I ask, so what no, was the procedure, procedure that you had done on your knee? What did they actually do? Did you well, have that done on your knee? Well, what's what's interesting is I, I don't if you've ever been to Thailand or uh, a third world country, if you want to say it that way, uh, you'll learn quickly that the hygiene and the sanitary conditions are different than what I'm used to. I'm I'm from Atlanta, uh, which was a which actually is a very clean city compared to say Bangkok, and for me when I was there, I never felt I, I thought you know what. If I do this here, uh, what happens if something goes wrong? I'm so far from home. Secondly, uh, I'll never come back here. I'm not going to fly all the way back to say, hey, can you do a checkup? You know, that doesn't make any sense. So I decided to look for someone that can do this type of procedure in the States. When I, I looked, I couldn't find initially, but I didn't know what to look for. Then I found something where they did, they used the placental tissue, like from somebody else. And they basically brought it into the office and my nurse injected it into my knee. So at least I was home when I did it. So I learned about it all. And I went to the clinics and I talked to the doctors and they were really nice. I was just like not feeling safe. So I came home and then sure. I got the, I got the placental tissue. They injected my knee and that, that, that was all it needed. And I was like, Holy crap, this worked. I, I was, I was, I was literally very skeptical, but once it worked for me, I was like all on board. I said, we're changing this entire practice to be only regenerative medicine, Wow! Uh, which my partner at the time was not excited about like I was because he didn't have the same experience. So we, we changed from rehab to just stem cell regenerative therapy, and we became the largest uh, center in Atlanta uh, for wow. quite some time. And uh, yeah, we did that. And it was amazing, but there's been advances in stem cells even since then that that um, are are still available. Some some procedures are not. Now I'll, I'll give you an example. If we take a stem cell, like I said earlier, you can take a stem cell and and you can expand it into a colony. That's called uh, growing or expanding stem cells, and that's how you get a massive amount of those. And you can do that in other countries. However, in the, F, the FDA does not allow that to be to be done, use of expanded stem cells. So, uh, so there, that's a problem because that those are the most powerful ones. I mean, if you have a massive, like 200 million stem cells, that can make a huge difference compared to, say, a couple thousand. You, you see what I mean? Because if I pull out bone marrow and I take your stem cells, you know, let's say you got... 20,000. Well, if I compare that to 200 million, you could see quite a difference. So in like other countries, you, they can expand it and they, you can get those massive quantities and that's how they're using it for all these uh, amazing, you know, autism and other, uh, you know, incurable conditions and doing and, and having amazing results, but it's restricted here in the United States. So the FDA says you can't take your own stem cells and put them back in your body and expand them, which is, it's, 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 it's a, it's a problem, but I understand why, because it can go, something could go bad. I mean, it's like what they, like CRISPR, for example, people are doing CRISPR at home, you know, editing their own genes, probably not a good idea if you don't know what you're doing. Right. So, so, um, the, the, the evolution of stem cell is what we learned about how they work. Because when we, when I was doing it, we thought we would just inject a stem cell or you know uh, some placental tissue which contains stem cells into your knee, and then suddenly that that knee would uh, those stem cells or that tissue we, uh, would grow into a new knee. That's what we thought, uh, but we found out that's not how it works. What happens is the stem cells go into the area, and they stimulate your own per, what's called progenitor cells. Which are which are stem cells, but they're they're tissue specific. So you have progenitor cells of cartilage and your muscle ligaments, you know those type of things. But they're only going to make one tissue line. So we found out that the stem cells, when injected, 
stimulate your progenitor cells to get to work and then they start to do the re regeneration of the cartilage the ligaments the muscle the bone all that's done by your own body cells so if when you get real you know when you get to a certain age it, it doesn't work so well but as you, when you know obviously the younger you are the better the results can be um so so that's how stem cells work but the but what's more interesting is when they go to the area, they send out these chemical messages, kind of like text messages. Okay, think of it like that. So you get them, the, the, they send out the messages to the, the worker cells, let's just say it that way. And those chemical messages are a little bubble that, that protects the message because it has RNA, which we're using right now on our vaccine, or vaccine. It's using the same thing. We're using what's called an exosome, which is the vesicle that it, it's protected in. So it's a it's a it's a circular vesicle. It has messenger RNA, which is for proteins. It has so, so just so people understand, so so just say a vesicle. Just explain what a vesicle is itself. It's just like a bubble. Just think bubble. of it like a exactly. bubble. Yeah, right. it's a protective bubble that has right. contents in it. Okay, right. Right. and it contains messenger RNA, which is used uh, that that's the recipe for proteins. Uh, it has microRNA, which affects the genes. It can it can um, alter the gene expression and turn off production. Uh, and it also has protein in it. And so so this stem cell sends out a message to the other cell to start working, and it uses these little bubbles. Well, what they found out, like I don't know, maybe about eight or nine years ago, that you don't even need the stem cell anymore. You could take the stem cell in a lab, expand them in a lab, which you're allowed to do. And just use those little bubbles, the ex they're called exosomes, and just use that for the therapy. And they're tiny, tiny, tiny. They're a hundredth the size of a cell. So they don't have any markers that would cause the body to reject them. And they don't get seen because they don't have those markers that a cell has. So you can just use the, the, the stem cell signals, the stem cell chemicals, which is called exosomes in this case, or micro um, nanoparticles, and just use those for your therapy and not even have a live cell from somebody else in your body. And, and that's, that's the stem cell 2.0 I'm talking about. That's, that's, where, uh, that's what they're using. for. They're, they actually took the same technology that I've been using for years for regeneration and anti-aging, and they did it with the vaccine. That's what the vaccine is. The vaccine is... Uh, basically, where they've taken um, a, a, a messenger RNA, which is, has a recipe in it, and they, they inject it into the body, and it goes into the cells. The cells make what's called a spike protein, which causes an immune reaction. So, And then the immune reaction causes the immune system to remember that and make antibodies, and then it's supposed to protect us from the COVID, right? So that's, that is called exosome therapy. Uh, from people in regenerative medicine, but instead of making a spike protein, we're using it to make uh, proteins that we want, not like something that sets off our immune system. Wow. Tom, you want to just ask something? Or? Yeah, I was going to say, are there lesser restrictions on those as opposed to the stem cells? You know, it's since it's, it's a gray area, honestly. Um, so the FDA is only allowed... Uh, the use of that to be cosmetically but there are many doctors that do it off label and they're you know they're, they're getting amazing results but it's it is it is still considered uh scientific or what is it experimental and definitely off label so you know but there's lots of you know doctors who do these type of procedures but it is it is promoted as a cosmetic uh, which it, it does amazing results for skin. I'll, I have to show you an example of, of a gentleman, uh, uh, African-American man who uh, got burned, his face got burned uh, with um, at a, like a barbecue fire. He was putting on a fire, a gas fire with water, and it just burned his face. And then uh, they, they started using exosomes, and it was like he had a baby, uh, baby soft skin after two months, and he had no, no scarring and no keloids. It was unbelievable what happened. Uh -huh. I, I'll, uh, I'll pull it up on my backdrop here, and I'll show you what I mean, because it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah, wow. Mark, you look like you're poised to ask something. That I'm, that I'm fascinated by this, this discussion. Yeah. Um, 
how are they, I guess, harvested or created or where do you access these stems? There you go. Here. What? There he is. Wow. You can see this is, this is when he got burned. That oh. is a second degree burn, if you don't know. This is, this one right here is like seven days. Yeah, day seven. Wow. And this is, this is two months later. Look at this. So, again. so I just want to describe this to our WATD listeners. So, so what Dr. Ross is showing us is I want you to just imagine a man whose face has been really disfigured due to burns. And then these exos is, is the exosomes. It's, yeah. Exosomes have literally restored him. So you would think you would think that the before and after pictures have been reversed. That this yeah. is the before with him with his great skin and then the after is his burnt, but it's not. It's fascinating. Wow. Yes. You know, and, and and what's funny is he actually looks better now bef than before he got burned. Yeah. He literally got what we would call a chemical peel because it just he's got a brand new uh a glow. If see, you know, since this comes from you know, pregnancy, you know how women get that glow? Well, th that's what that he has there, kind of a like as if he was pregnant, he has a glow to him. That's how it looks. Um, and that's a real thing. So wow. that's that's how that's how it works. Pretty cool, well, thanks, right? Thanks so much for that that visual. ATD folks, can you know, go on to the um the Dr. Joe show. We'll be we'll be showing this on YouTube next oh. week. How is that done procedurally? Was there injections into his face? Uh, no, no. It was uh, he literally just used a sprayer, just like a like a mister, wow. and just put it on his face every day. That was it. Wow. Yeah, that's why I said it was it was approved for cosmetics and burns and and any kind of cosmetic problem. Uh, it's it's used for uh, hair loss as well. They're using it, injecting it in there. It's stimulating hair growth. Uh, so that's cosmetic as well, but you can use it for uh, sexual dysfunction. It's used for that because it stimulates blood vessel uh, formation. And it's and what I like the best is is I call it I call it the birth, birthday booster, which is once a year on your birthday you do an IV of, of these exosomes, and as opposed to you're getting older by on your driver's license, but you're actually making your cells a little a, a year younger. So oh wow yeah, it's the birthday gift that no one gives back. You know what I mean? Wow yeah. So that's uh, it's 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 I've done it. I, I do it on my birthday as well. I do it more more than that, but it keeps me healthy and young. And and the weirdest thing that I've noticed is that my vision improves instantly. The next day I can, I don't need to wear reading glasses. These are just reading glasses. And I, I and I can go months without wearing them. It's, it's really uh, pretty cool. I haven't done it in a couple months. As you can see, I got them on now. It's remarkable. So, so the things that cells can do are just amazing, but it's the therapy. I'm looking <laughs> forward to it. Yes, this, this is amazing, amazing. Stuff. How do how do people actually access this? How do how do they get exosomes? Well, um, well, typically what you can do is just search it online and put you know go to Google and type exosome in your area, and you should be able to find someone that does it, or look for a med spa or any place that does regenerative medicine, and they'll they'll have easy access to get exosomes, and so. Go on, go on. Oh, the, the question usually is, uh, how much do I need and how much would it cost? Yeah. And uh, so I get that question a lot. And, and here's what I'll give you a simple, a simple answer. Uh, it ranges. Usually for around 2,500 to 7,500 based on the condition and how much product you use. So it comes typically, most of them come in a vial of about five milliliters. Uh, and usually those vials go for with with the the, the including the treatment uh, about twenty five hundred dollars a vial. So uh, sometimes like if you're doing a face, you could use one vial for that. Or if you're doing hair, you could do like one vial for that. If you're doing a systemic IV, um, it's usually since it's going through your whole body, you want to usually use more. And they found that typically like 
depending on the product, of course, uh, three vials might be, you might need that. If, so it's not a procedure for someone that doesn't have the financial resources to, mm. to cover. But that's why I said I, I work with a lot of celebrities that obviously finances are not an issue. So they, right. they can do it whenever they want. And uh, yeah. So, so I, I've seen a lot of patients, some of my patients you know, in psyche, um, but they, they have, you know, like osteoarthritis or different, you know, like rheumatoid arthritis and they, and they have swollen knuckles. And yeah. Would that work in that injecting? Absolutely exosomes yep. into that oh yeah yeah uh if you're going to do it in a joint exosomes are so tiny that they won't stay in that area very long so you'd probably okay. need something that creates this what's called a scaffold so you could use amniotic fluid or you could use uh a wharton's jelly product uh which which will create a scaffold which is just like what you think it is it's kind of like a like a, a matrix that things can stick to so they can stimulate that in the area so um, that that's how when you use, uh, you know, doing a joint, you usually want to use something that has some consistency. Amniotic fluid works. Um, Wharton's jelly is part of the placental uh, tissue, so that that's also uh, very popular as well. And, and how how does somebody actually do that? They rub it on, or they have to inject it in? What would they do if uh, they were to knuckle most things? Most of the time, if you you know with it. With that type of thing, you probably want to have to inject it because you're using multiple um, things. Exosomes are no problem. They'll go right in through your skin, no problem. There's no barriers. Mm. Uh, but like I said, they won't stay in that area, so they'll just systemically go, and, and, and their results will be minimal uh, just because they won't be in that area. So you probably want to mix it with another uh, a scaffold product, and that would have to be injected. Hmm. How, how do people find you how do they find information about you you have a website or yeah yeah just go to it's just my name dr ross carter.com d you know and just spell it's just dr ross carter r-o-s-s-c-a-r-t-e-r.com and <laughs> you'll see a bunch of information i'm um i'm i'm about to release uh, i'm gonna i've got a, a telemedicine institute that i'm um doing so that people that are curious about these procedures and want to know more about it, they can they can uh, set up appointments and I can help them out. Because, you know, regenerative medicine doesn't just mean stem cell. I mean, you can do PRP, you can do even hormone therapy and peptides. You know, those are also some advanced therapies that, that really change you at a cellular level. And uh, so I can offer that as a something uh, remotely as well. It doesn't have to be local. So there's there's so much to talk about with this. You know, one one of the things the Dr. Joe show is based on is the I am approach. The idea that you know we're we're always doing the best we can. That that nothing really is sick. Nothing is broken. There is no pathology. It seems to me that this sort of embraces that. That here you have a bunch of cells who, for no fault of their own, they're in an environment where they're just not working as well as they could. They're doing the best they can. But now you've changed the environment and you change the way those cells are functioning. A am I missing something here or is this basically? No, that, that has to do with our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is everything. I mean, yeah. the, the damage that we put our bodies through on a daily basis. I mean, we all know we drank too much. We ate the wrong foods. We didn't sleep. Uh, that's why I got these glasses on. This is helps with uh, blocking the blue light. Um, but, you know, everything that we do, it just causes our body to start to be damaged. I mean, when we fall down, we slip, we hurt ourselves, we, we're always doing something to mess ourselves up. Uh, our body has the amazing ability to heal itself to some degree, but there are limitations to matter. And when you have more catabolism than you have anabolism, then that's when you have chronic problems that just don't heal. And these are ways to stimulate these cells to start working again because for whatever reason they're they're dormant yeah you change the environment you change the response everything I mean, yep and that for me is is the basis of so much because instead of seeing ourselves as sick and broken instead of seeing ourselves as not doing as well as we can what small change can you make so that you're at a different best you can and and this is this is, I mean, I want to say revolutionary, even though it's been around for a long time. I don't think people really know about this, uh, right? 
I mean, Mark, did, did you know about regenerative medicine? No, no. And, and you know, I do feel as though I was on the forefront when they, you know, the nurses were rushing around saying, really, you really want to do this? You really want to do this? You know, and awesome. get the FedEx package ready. But it was more out of fear because I had read in advance that, you know, this is something that if you get childhood leukemia, that you yeah. could actually cure it. And I, and I kept thinking about it. I said, you know what? I think at the time, doctor, you had mentioned the price. I think it was around $1,200 at mm-hmm. the time to do it. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, I stored it for a hundred dollars a year going wow. forward. And, That's great. and, and, I, and, and I, all I thought to myself was, you know, what if my kid gets leukemia and I didn't do this? Yeah. You know, and I knew that I could have done it. And, but, you know, did I know that it was real and all that? Not at the time. I, I didn't. And I, but I was a believer then and I, I am now. And I'd love to do a little bit more research uh, for me personally. Find out what you can do with it. I mean, you, yeah. you literally have a regenerative factory uh, waiting that's in storage right now. You might want to break it out and see what you can do with it. Cool. Well, so that- if- if I borrow some of Mark's stem cells, am I going to look like Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to? <laughs> no, no, just, just <laughs> what were you going to say, Mark? But, well, but that's a, that, it, it brings up the topic that I had asked earlier, and I think we got cut off by a commercial or it was on commercial is, you know, where do you as a doctor supplying this get the supply? Oh, you know, I mean, I, I got, I got a friend. You know, yeah. So, are, they, are they are they are they yeah. running around the maternity ward and grabbing them out of the trash? Or I mean, how is that? Exactly. What, 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 what do you call the placenta? The placenta right, out of the I trash. Was, right. Uh, I can tell you what they, they they're actually donated. So they donate them and uh, then they use them from there. They once the placenta is, is uh, donated and used for this type of purpose, they they have to you know screen the heck out of it and they check it for everything. It, it's put in quarantine really uh, for a period of time while they you know, have third party test it for any kind of diseases or anything like that because obviously <laughs> that's a big deal. You know that's a problem yeah. if uh, somebody catches a disease. So they 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 make they make sure that the, it's tested. Now now here's the thing: you've got to be careful. Uh, when you're doing this, you can't just just go, "Hey, I want to do this," and you just go go to the first person you, you think of right. or find. Uh, you you need to be very careful in what you're doing because here, here's what here's what I one thing I tell you: when somebody says they're doing stem cell therapy, and if they say they're doing it and they're using placental tissue, it's not accurate. It's not accurate. The amount of stem cells in placental tissue procedures is extremely low. It's less than 1%. So when somebody says they're using uh, millions or thousands of uh, stem cells, I, it's very untrue. It's just that there's not that much uh, of those cells that are going to be alive when they've been frozen and thawed and then injected into a foreign body. They just don't survive. So That's you need why to I was go, talking, I was you need talking to go about well. expansion. You know, when right. you have expanded, that works. That's one thing. The other is that's why I said the the exosomes are pro- are going to be better. I would I would suggest uh, you get better results with exosomes. Right? So we, we just spent. So you have to go to a stem cell center, not a plus center. Sorry, not a. So, yeah. We got one minute, less than a minute. Small changes have big effects. What small change can you recommend to our audience? Uh, do some research and find out what, you know, see if the, if you have a problem that can be uh, help with legitimate medicine. Great. Thank you. Dr. Carter, it has been an absolute pleasure and honor to have you on here.